Hem, my dear brothers and sisters, I was asked the question whether Allah is the same God as the God of the Old Testament. And I would like to elaborate on that. The answer to that question is yes. The Muslim concept of Allah is exactly the same as the Jewish concept of Hashem. Uh, therefore, no matter what you hear, you know, some people like to claim that God, Allah is the moon God or whatever, whatever you hear, this is all nonsense. And, um, you know, whether the word Allah was used for something else before Islam, I'm not sure, maybe. I'm not sure exactly, I'm not a linguist. But that's really not the important part. The important part is what is Allah today? What does it, the word, the name of, or the word Allah mean today to Muslims? What it means today to Muslims is exactly the same what Hashem means to the Jews. That's really, there's no argument there. Our only argument between Jews and Muslims are whether Muhammad was a prophet or not. That's really the only argument. But the concept of God is, you know, really exactly the same. And therefore, you know, no matter what you hear, even if some Jews tell you that, oh, we don't believe in the same God as the Muslims do, they're only saying this because of political reasons. And everybody knows this, you know, since Jews and Muslims are at war in Israel, so some Jews may be... Uh, prone to say, oh, therefore anything Muslims do, it's wrong, you know, they will believe in a different God, they do this, this, but this is all nonsense, you know, uh, and in fact, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, who was probably the biggest scholars that uh, scholar that ever lived, he lived about 1,000 years ago, he said he was really critical of those who are, you know, spreading lies just because of a political um, reason. And he was really critical. And he says, those who say that Muslim concept of God is different and it's like idol, he says, these are bad, this is, uh, you know, bad people. I don't know exactly which word he used, but he was really critical of those people. And he says that, in fact, he says, the Muslim concept of God is exactly the same. And not only that, he says, if a Jew needs to pray, he is allowed to go to a mosque and pray together with the Muslims because the Muslim concept of God is exactly the same as the Jewish concept of God. There's no argument there. So I hope this answers your question. And no matter what, by the way, one, one more thing I wanted to mention. Just like in English, we have, we have the word God, right? Back maybe 1,000 years ago, I'm not sure what the word God meant. It could have probably be the name of some idol that was named God. And then eventually this term came into English language and it began to be used to a different, uh, uh, in a different connotation to the one God. So therefore, you know, just like, just like somebody who uses the word God today does not necessarily mean that he worships that idol that existed 1,000 years ago, right? Because this is just a word. The way it was used at that time is one thing, now it's used differently. Therefore, same thing with the, the word Allah. We go by what the word Allah means to Muslims today. It doesn't matter what it meant before Islam. It's not really relevant. So, to answer the question, I want to repeat it and uh, to make sure everybody really understands that. Yes, the Allah is really the same God of the Torah. Allah is the same God of the Torah. And uh, as I said, the only argument uh, Muslims and Jews have is whether Muhammad was a prophet or not. That's really the only argument. As far as God goes, or Allah goes, we believe in the same God. In fact, as a Jew, I can say, and I feel, f and I can freely say this, and without even any hesitations, I can use the Arabic phrase, Allahu Akbar. And have no problem saying this. Allahu Akbar, I can say this all I want. And even the part of the, sh the shahada that the Muslims say, Lo ilaha illa Allah, I can also freely say this and I don't feel any, you know, remorse about saying this. Because their concept of God is exactly the same as the Jewish concept of God. Thank you for watching. All the praises for Allah, who is the author of all existence and the most generous to his creation while he is also the all-compelling. He 
is the only one worthy of our worship, having no partners, no associates, no sons, no daughters, no one whom he must consult, and no one or anything which has any comparison with him. All the praise is for Allah, who is the king of all who claim sovereignty, the only one who has the right to legislate for his creatures. He is the giver of life. He is the causer of death, while death has no effect upon him, because he is the ever-living, the self-subsisting, the eternal and the only absolute. All the praise is for Allah, who has power over all things, and there is in reality no power and no strength, no influence to cause benefit or detriment except through him. It is he who created this complex world, the seen and the unseen, the evident and the speculative, the earth and all that is on it and everything that is in it. It is he who sent his messengers and prophets alayhi salam with the common message of strict monotheism which simply means that there is absolutely no one worthy of worship no one worthy of our obedience except the almighty the one the absolute and who has no partners the earlier messages which changed the world in the area in which the prophets were sent those messages we know have changed and even the prophets who brought them their names are now lost we just know in general because Allah told us in the Quran وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ I've sent to every nation a messenger calling people to worship Allah alone and to avoid the worship of false gods. This essential message has been preserved in Islam in a way that it was never preserved before. Not because the message was different because it was the same message but because of the fact that there would be no other prophets who would come after Muhammad so therefore that message now had to be protected it had to be preserved in a way none of the earlier messages were preserved I'm the latest what you say you have come to know 40 years back and what you call the Big Bang is already mentioned in the book which I read the glorious Quran it's mentioned 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya chapter number 21 verse number 30 which says Avalam yaral kafru. do not the unbelievers see anna samawati wal arda that the heaven and the earth were joined together and we closed them asunder what you're talking about the Big Bang I try to imagine compressing a spring I push it closer and closer and closer together so it's smaller and smaller and smaller and I've stored a tremendous amount of energy in that spring and when I let it go it bursts out it bursts out it bursts out the creation of the universe which you came to know 40 years back is already mentioned in this book the glorious Quran 1400 years ago who could have mentioned that in the Quran so they say, they say Maybe someone wrote, maybe it's a fluke, maybe it's a guesswork. A human being, regardless of who they are, or where they are, or what they do, will have this curiosity. They'll want to know, why am I here? How did I get here? And do I have a purpose? And if so, what is it? The only one who would really be able to answer that question would be the Creator Himself. If there is a Creator, it would be up to Him to tell us why we were created and what he expects from us and what this life is really about. Allah has shown the people from the time of Adam until right now 
has shown the people what he wants from them. And it's a very simple thing. And that is that worship be for him alone without any partners. In fact, we know this life to be a test from Almighty God. That's why we're born and that's why we die. Because there has to be a beginning and an end for us to be tested on.